Hello, and welcome back. Uh, we are now at part two of this week's new comics, bitches! So, um, let's continue, shall we? Okay, so... Buffy the Vampire Slayer, season nine, number two. Um, I am semi-familiar with uh, the work of Andrew uh, Chambliss. Um, I know that, you know, Joss is listed, of course, as uh, executive producer on this series. Um, it's definitely clear that uh, he's probably, you know, he probably wrote some of the dialogue in this issue. Um, and obviously is watching very carefully over the, uh, you know, over what's going on with his beloved character. Uh, he's a little busy right now, of course, directing the Avengers. Uh, so, uh, and by the way, if you didn't watch my last vlog about the Avengers trailer, now would be a good time to go, well, not now, but, you know, after we're done here, go ahead and watch that. Anyway, this is, there's some really, 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 really interesting stuff going on here. Obviously, you know, we're dealing with a lot of aftermath here. This, you know, there's, you know, because there's this. And, uh, you know, and there's Christmas Gage doing uh, Angel and Faith, which is also a really good series. Uh, you know, no, uh, nothing to discuss this week. But, uh, you know, that's much more about redemption. Uh, Buffy is much more still about, you know, and, and it's, you know, Angel and Faith, of course, being consistent with those two characters, their path to redemption. Uh, and obviously for Angel's, uh, killing of uh, of Giles, uh, and uh, but Buffy is still about okay a young you know young woman who is the chosen one and now she's the only one because she uh, removed all magic from the world uh, when she destroyed the seed in season eight and now she you know she's the only one who has Slayer abilities or is she? And that's what makes this comic really interesting, a lot of fun, and just a really, really solid read. Uh, not as solid as I would like it to be. Um, it still, it feels a little bit drawn out in some areas. I feel that they could have done, uh, they could have compacted this issue a little bit. Um, uh, you know, there's some, there are, you know, there's always something interesting going on in this issue, so I shouldn't, re you know, I shouldn't say that they should have necessarily, but there's just some scenes that seem a little uh, extraneous, you know, uh, you know, just a lot of the conversations between uh, uh, Buffy and Spike don't seem to have a whole lot of meaning other than as kind of a setup for, you know, what else is going on? I was very, I was actually thoroughly confused with uh, the uh, the whole thing uh, where you know someone is looking for uh, her. But I'm really interested in what's going on with these vampires who are basically turning into dead human bodies, um, and that's where the book takes the spin on the head. Is that you know, well, not just that, but also with Buffy getting arrested, and uh, and then uh, breaking out of prison, well, not breaking out of prison, but breaking out of her uh, kind of her, the interrogation room, um, and uh, you know there's stuff going on with uh, with Xander and Dawn. Uh, not really sure kind of what's going on there, um, but again, you know this new character that's that's come along that is able to turn these men, or I shouldn't say men, but uh, these vampires into normal human beings and also make them dead. Uh, it's a very interesting, uh, you know, it's a very interesting tack for this to, uh, for this to go on. And, uh, you know, I'm really digging that. I'm digging where this comic book is going. I always, you know, I pretty much always do. Um, so, you know, because it's, it's Joss. Not that Joss, not that everything does turns to gold, but hey, represent. So, anywho, uh, let's move it along. Um, 
the New Avengers, number 17. Um, first of all, take a look at this cover. Now, uh, okay, so Diodato is doing the art. Well, I th he's been doing the art. Um, but he's doing the art, and he did this amazing cover, awesome cover, but it's kind of a, not a middle finger, but it, it's kind of a, a tease uh, in the essence of, well, you know what? Um, two of the, you know, a couple of the people that are on this cover are actually not in the book, and that kind of bothers me. Um, especially when someone that I'm really wanting to see in the role of an Avenger, uh, obviously since it was clear that, okay, Daredevil is now officially an Avenger, um, you know, he uh, he's not in this issue, and that bothers me. Um, aside from that, uh, you know, I, I, I really like what... Uh, uh, what Bendis is doing with, okay, well, each of the spells that, uh, you know, Doctor Strange uses, he actually gives a little uh, credit to. This is actually something that's probably going to go in my pull box. Uh, New Avengers has not been in there for a while. Uh, Avengers has, um, but New Avengers, no. Um, just because I felt like I was, <laughs> I was getting, like, Avengers overload with Avengers and Secret Avengers and, uh, and, and New Avengers. Um but, you know, this is still, you know, obviously also Fallout from 16.1, uh, which I didn't get a chance to review because it was, you know, during the month of the New 52 number ones. And, uh, and that was a really cool issue. Uh, you know, it made even cooler by the fact that Neil Adams was illustrating it because I love me some Neil Adams. Um, but essentially that this is, you know, it, it's, you know, building on that, building on the fact that, okay, Norman Osborn is out of prison right now. He was going to be taken to, you know, essentially be held trial for, uh, you know, I think crimes against humanity. Um, and he's teamed up with, you know, Madam Hydra and uh, Gorgon, uh, who you might remember from uh, the Enemy of the State and Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. storylines from Wolverine when Mark Miller was doing it with... Uh, John Romita Jr., which is my favorite Wolverine storyline ever. Um, yes, even more so than the Claremont Frank Miller Wolverine storyline. Um, but just a lot of really cool things. Just god damn it, I love Diodato's art. <laughs> he's so he's so good. Um, he's just fantastic. So I mean, you know, big kudos to you know everybody who puts out this book and for making it a new poll on my list. Um, okay, uh, let's go back to DC for a while. Um, and let's talk about Batgirl number two. Uh, this is the beginning of the comic book that I was waiting for from Gail Simone to be putting out. Um, this is a much, uh, a much more in line with what she can do with characters when given the right amount of time and given the right amount of thought. Um, the, uh, the art by uh, Artie and uh, Seif is a little iffy in this issue. It seems like it was kind of rushed, um, you know, especially since last issue was very clean. Um, but, I, you, know, you know, one way or the other, it still works. Um, you know, I, I really like the story that they're working out here that, you know, essentially, you know, we have people who are kind of destined to die, you know, who were destined to die, and uh, they haven't. Um, and we have a man who's trying to basically correct that. Um, that is, you know, that's the sole purpose for his existence. So he's not your standard, I'm the, you know, bad guy villain, he is someone who devoutly believes that people who are saved, that basically, you know, these miraculous savings uh, should not occur. That basically people who he sees that are destined to die should be dead. And that is the, you know, that's the function of Mirror, who is the villain in these comics. Um, 
and you know it leaves off on a really good cliffhanger. It picks up basically. I'm glad it it uh, it picked up where it did. I was kind of you know not liking the ending of the first issue. Uh, I just I like this issue a lot better. Um, Gail Simone really has you know is back on the mark here. I'm sad to hear that she's leaving uh, Fury of Firestorm. That's basically the reason that I want to read that book. Uh, because I like the, you know, again, as I discussed in my review of the first issue, I like the fact that her and Ethan Van Skyver are very, you know, very uh, disparate uh, personalities, and that they're, you know, and, and we have two disparate personalities in the book. And I think they, they both have, like, the language of those two, you know, the language and characteristics of those two characters. And I think that's actually what makes it strong. So with her leaving, uh, it's probably going to stop me from collecting the book. I don't know why she's left. Um, nothing has really been made clear. Uh, I just, you know, basically it's, you know, that's what I've heard. But anyway, back to Batgirl for a little while. Um, it does, you know, obviously, again, touch on a little bit of, you know, you know, it, it, it I shouldn't say, you know, it, it, it's more like it builds on the mystery of how exactly she got out of the wheelchair. And, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the comic, you know, as far as the combat scenes are devoted to uh, her still kind of getting her bearings straight as far as, uh, you know, being uh, kind of a superhero again and not just, you know, Barbara Gordon, you know, the, you know, the girl in the wheelchair. So, um, I like that. I like, I like, I'm liking this book a lot better now. Uh, I think that it's finally found its, its feet or legs, whatever you want to call it. Um, feet and legs. I think this has the potential to go a long way. And I think that it finally has found solid footing. I guess that's what I mean by feet and legs. So, um, Okay, so uh, Frankenstein, Agent of Shade, number two. Uh, again, Jeff Lemire, or Lemire, however you pronounce his name. This is another really interesting issue as far as you know the you know the, the stakes being upped again. You know, I'm enjoying what's going on with Shade. I'm really liking what's going on with uh, you know the character of Nina Mazursky. Um, you know, our kind of creature from the Black Lagoon lady. Um, it's just, this is really smart writing. I love the art in this in this series. Um, Alberto Ponticelli. Uh, it's, just, it's just wonderful. It's it's not cartoony. It's not super comic booky. It's just it, it's it's pretty abstract, and this works really well as far as what you know this comic should be. It is kind of a um, uh, one might say it's kind of a riff on Hellboy, um, as far as you know the you know that Shade and the BPRD they're, they're almost kind of similar, but this works for me more than Hellboy does for whatever reason, um, and uh, you know it's just I, I guess because it has it seems to have more of a uh, a real element to it than Hellboy did, at least to me. Again, I'm not dissing on Hellboy. It's just something that I never got into. Um, so, but this is, you know, you know, just obviously learning more about these characters, learning more about what they, you know, what they've been, what they, you know, what they need to do. Frankenstein's character in and of himself is really interesting. So, you know, and you know Ray Palmer being you know involved in all this, it's just it's a it's a really smart read. Jeff Jeff Lemire, you know again a guy I've never heard of before a couple of months ago, and now he's turning in some you know some of the you know some of the better and best work of the uh, the new DCU. So you know please continue on, Jeff. You know I'm rooting for you all the way here. Um, so we're going to take a little break now. We're going to come back, uh, and we're going to discuss more comics. So stay tuned.